We don't give God permission. Now we are to repent and there is a level of giving uh, in or not and quenching the spirit, etc. But we don't give God permission to do anything. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Contra Thoughts. My name is Richard and we're talking about a modern apostle coming up next. You know he's here. You know he's here. Of course, I'm talking about coffee, my sidekick. No, but really, we're talking about a modern apostle today. I know you're excited. I know you didn't probably realize there were modern apostles, but there are. Uh, at least some people say so. We're going to be looking at Catherine Crick. Catherine Crick. And she is around. She's actually quite popular. I just saw something. She's in, going to be in London next week. Uh, she was just here in Kentucky. Um, she was just in Florida, California, Tennessee. I don't know. There's a bunch of places. She's like, it drops off. I'm following her. I'm following her on my YouTube page. <laughs> Because I've seen her around for a while, and not a lot of people have talked about her or what she's doing. Uh, I might talk about her more, I might not. But ultimately, it's not really about her, right? And a lot of times, people will comment on my videos and say, oh, you're just doing this to puff up your channel, blah, blah, blah. And yes, that's exactly right. That's exactly what I'm doing. Um, no, not really. But as a pastor, and though I'm not your pastor unless you are in my congregation physically and I can see you face to face... Uh, I'm not your pastor, and there's no online pastors. That's not pastoring. However, I do pastor a, a church, and I would do this same thing uh, if someone were coming into the church or teaching or reading or having some sort of Bible study about this. Uh, so I would do the same thing. We're called to do that as uh, men and women, but predominantly men, to guard the sheep and also guard our families. Um some people are more gullible than others, and some people are more uh, prone to pr pride and arrogance and so on. Generally, you know, one gender more than the other and one gender more than the other. Uh, the point is that Catherine Crick is like many others that are well-known, but she's not very well-known. I hope this doesn't give her too much publicity because, you know, I'm so famous. Now, she's got like 244,000 subscribers on YouTube. I'm waiting to get to that 1,000 mark. So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Catherine Craig, I don't know where she is. I don't know if she's married. I, I don't know if she's got a family. I have the feeling that she doesn't have a family and she's not married. Anyway, she's kind of a, a classic health wealthy preacher, but does a lot of healing and other such things. Now, the question is, is she actually healing? Right? Is she actually doing these things? Um, I don't know, but she uses all the same buzzwords like deliverance and encounter and excited and hallelujah and healing. You're going to get a blessing and anointing. Notice all those words, by the way, or most of those words are focused on the person getting something, right? God is in, and then the, the speaker was like, God is telling me, God showed me, God wants me to tell you. You can't argue with that. You can't argue with that, right? God told me. And it's like, well, he didn't tell me. Well, but he told me. And you should trust me. Now, the question again is, are these people hearing voices? Or are they just making it up? God wants to bless you. Right? And we see a lot of these words uh, in the lexicon of modern Christianity, so-called. But we're going to look at her. Uh, this is just one video, how to fast. And I've been doing intermittent fasting. Uh, not for spiritual reasons, but for health reasons. And I feel confident to tell you that because if you're talking about it spiritually, then, you know, you're going to remove your blessing. And I think the, the problem is, you know, sometimes the, the modern cessationists, the people who's no more miracles, no more anything, go so far because they see people like this. And they think, yeah, that's it. She's Looney Tunes. And it's like, okay. 
But is all the things she's talking about, does that mean none of that can happen? People can't get healed. People can't get this. People can't, they're, they'll make a caricature of that cessationist. I'm not a hardcore cessationist by any means. I'm also not a continuationist. And it's really not an either or. Like, I believe people can get healed, I believe, if, and I'll reveal a little bit, if the proper and this and this and this, God could give a tongue uh, or, or needed for salvation. Not at all, because the Bible doesn't say that. And I, I might have lost some subscribers. I've never spoken in a tongue and I probably never will. But I'm also not going to, you know, put God in the proverbial box and say he can't, quote unquote, do that anymore. You know why? Because God is present now. He, everything, everything in history, a thousand, two thousand, back to thousands of years ago when he created to present to a thousand years from now is all present on the table of God's view. It's all now. God is a big God. The creator of the universe is very big. He's not caught off guard. He doesn't know, you know, or not know certain things. There's not like a before or an after or a this or a, God's not bound by time. That's my point. However, she speaks in tongues here. Now, I don't know if she's just, I don't know what she's doing. But she's talking about how to fast. And then we're going to look at some scripture. Okay. So I'm, it's on one and a half speed because we don't have all day. And this is, you know, 56 minutes. We're not going to listen to the whole thing by any means. All right. Make sure you share this new stream. Those of you watching on YouTube and Facebook, welcome. I'm so excited for what God's going to do today. It's going to be powerful. This word is going to bless you. It's going to change your life. It's going to make you grow spiritually so much. And we're going to do IG Live today. So after I share the message, we're going to go on to Instagram. And I'm going to call on to people one, on, one by one and pray for you one-on-one -on -one prayer on IG Live, and you're going to be freed and healed and encounter Jesus, whether you're there on one-on-one -on -one or whether you're just watching. God is going to touch you, deliver you, heal you, and I'm so... Okay, so right there, God's going to touch you, deliver you, heal you. I'm so excited, like right off the bat. Now, is there anything wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with that. But what she's doing, she's front-loading what's happening, the an anticipation. Like, it's like going into a movie, Right. And your friend saying this movie is so good. It is so good. The acting is phenomenal. The action scenes are just they're not over the top, but they're, they're realistic. But they're really they're suspenseful. And, and the writing is just just out of this world. It's so good. The lighting. I mean, everything about this movie is just phenomenal. And you watch the movie and it's you know, it's like, you know, the Muppets take New York or, you know, Barney goes to Christmas time at his grandma's like I, I, just some kids movie that's just corny and terrible and you're like i don't what <laughs> like what do you mean any of that stuff you're front loading and i anticipated all these things and it's not so oh excited get excited and get make excited. sure you share this with your friends make sure you share this so that others can be blessed too amen it's such a blessing to be able to be a vessel of god where someone can be set free, someone can be healed, someone can be saved because you invited them, because you shared this video. So make sure you share, 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 share. Hallelujah. So I'm going to teach on fasting today on how to fast effectively. If you didn't watch my message this past Sunday at Bible Church, Revival in the Park, uh, watch it actually this Sunday and the Sunday before. I've been teaching on the spirit of religion, what it is and how to identify it. There is a lot. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> spirit of religion. Now, again, there's this front loading going on. She's stacking the deck. And this is a common tactic that people want to do because they want to control the narrative, control the conversation. Just know that. Just know that. Spirit of religion. So she's talking about religion. Of religion in the body of Christ. Uh, the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the spirit of the Lord can be free, when the spirit of the Lord is is saturated the place, saturated the church, where there's no nothing holding back the spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. There is miracles. There are miracles. There is healing. There's deliverance. There's life when there is the spirit of the Lord uninhibited. But when religion seeps in, in it literally quenches the Holy Spirit. When you don't see the power of God in a church, you can know that the spirit of religion is there. And to be truthful, because the, the, the spirit of religion has seeped into the church so much, so much into the body of Christ, to be truthful, man, like pretty much most, if not all of us, have been taught at least something that was religious, at least something 
that was religious doctrine. All right. So some of us, <clears throat> most of us have been taught some sort of religious doctrine. So now she's using negative words. These words are bad. Doctrine. Ooh, that's bad. Religion. That's bad. Like me saying communist or fascist or Nazi. Those are all bad words, at least to most of us. And so you're all automatically going to think up bad things, right? Especially Nazi, right? And therefore I can control the conversation. And we see this all the time with people being called that everywhere. And if everybody's, you know, one, then no one's one, right? Ultimately. But. Oh, religion. Oh, it's bad. Oh, yeah. You want religion. The spirit of religion? Ugh. Yuck. Gross, gross, gross. And again, we're not going to talk about Corinthians or Timothy or Titus or the fact that she's a woman and she's preaching the gospel. Um, and this is the culmination of, of, of multiple videos that I've watched, shorts and long, longs, uh, long form videos. I watched a revival, so-called, uh, I don't know, two weeks ago. There was one in Kentucky. I was actually wanting to go. It was, I just didn't work out. Um, just to kind of experience, quote unquote. But then they have testimonials. I've watched people's testimonials. And they all sound the same. And I'm going to put a list. I have a little link I'll, I'll show at the end here um, or in the description about the videos that I've watched. And you can go look other stuff if you want to. But it's all kind of the same sort of rhetoric. Religious revelation. The Pharisees knew the word of God perfectly. They knew the, they, these guys knew the word of God better than anybody. They could recite the word of God. They memorized the word of God. They knew it in and out, but they had the wrong revelation of the word of God. They actually had the opposite revelation of the word of God because they could not recognize Jesus, who is the word when he came. Not only could they not recognize. Okay. So the wrong revelation of God, that's not, uh, no, I mean, okay. Nicodemus and um, Joseph of Arimathea, both Pharisees, both part of the council. So when we say Pharisees, generally, obviously it's, it's a bit broad brush. Not all the Pharisees were heretics and evil people. Most of them were. Most of them were unbelievers, but it wasn't because they had religion. Nice Jesus, they crucified him. They accused him of going against the word of God when he was the word of God. They had it the opposite. It's the same word of God, but they're getting completely different revelation of the word of God, the religious revelation, which comes from the enemy. The, the, the aim okay, so that, again, that's just, that's not correct. That's just not correct. Of the spirit of the religion. The aim of why the devil wants you to have the spirit of religion is to keep you from knowing God's love, to keep you in bondage, to get you to do what the Pharisees did, blaspheme the Holy Spirit, and try to kill the move of God, and try to get you to go to hell. That's the aim of the devil with the spirit of religion, and the spirit of religion is found in the church. It's not found in atheists. It's found in the church. So the same way that the devil brought this religion, the belief in and worship of a superhuman controlling power, especially a personal God or gods, ideas about the relationship between science and religion, a particular system of faith and worship, the world's greatest religions. And lastly, a pursuit or interest to which someone ascribes supreme importance. Consumerism is the new religion. Okay, so everybody's religious. Okay, everyone, Catherine Crick, you're religious. Atheists, they're religious. I'm religious. You're religious. We're all religious. Just because we don't have some sort of um, high steeples and the vestments and the smells and the bells and we do the hand motions, that doesn't mean that's not religion only. Everyone's religious. Everyone has a certain thing we do, a certain thing we don't do, a certain perimeter that we go in. We believe something about the past, about the present, and about the future. I always laugh when, oh, I don't like organized religion. Oh, I like disorganized religion then. Is that what it is? Because everybody's religious. Everybody has a belief system. Even if that belief system is, I'm not sure that there is a God or there is no God, which is probably the most arrogant statement you can make. Yeah, because you're omniscient. Well, okay, so that means you're God, right? And you push on the common atheist and they're going to backpedal. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I mean I'm, I'm probably more agnostic. There's very few real atheists, quote unquote. And there are no actual atheists because God is revealing himself to everyone everywhere. And I'm going to go with the scripture and not people's opinions about that. Uh, religious revelation of the word of God. The same way he did with the Pharisees. He has the same tricks, the same schemes today. The same. So listen, body of Christ, all of us, we have to humble ourselves and just be real to the fact that there is probably some 
religious doctrine in us. Okay, so again, <clears throat> excuse me. Yes, there's religious doctrine. But notice how she's using doctrine and religion as bad words. Religion and doctrine are not bad words. False religion and false doctrine are bad. Now, those are bad. But I think it's C.S. Lewis that says, good philosophy has to exist, if nothing else, in order to answer bad philosophy. Good doctrine has to exist in order to answer bad doctrine. This woman has bad doctrine. That's a really great thumbnail there. I should screenshot that. I, but she's front-loading it to then walk you along like the little toddler with the little string, you know, three-year-old at the theme park that doesn't obey their parents because, you know, the parents are lazy or whatever. Or the... If Jesus were to come here in the flesh today, he would do some things that would offend a lot of people. Yeah, that's true. He would do some things that you wouldn't expect uh -huh. just because it is very rare that there's completely religion-free in us. Excuse me. Okay, so religion-free. As if, again, religion's bad. Religion is not bad, ladies and gentlemen. False religion's bad. But you're religious. I'm religious. We do things in a certain way right? You drink coffee, you eat food, you go here, you read the paper, you read the Bible, you do this, you do that, you go to the zoo on this day, you do this at Christmas, this at Resurrection Day, Easter, you do this on 4th of July. Those are all religious things. We're a traditional religious people. It's just, it, ritual, I mean, again, we live in this age where we just want to be free from any entanglements, okay? We have a historical religion based on facts. That's what Christianity is. But this woman pretends like it's brand new and, oh, you know, it's it's fine. Don't be religious because that's bad. Completely religion free because we've heard so many teachings. We've been to church for so long and we've built upon wrong doctrine sometimes, wrong religious revelations that we ourselves were saying, God told me this, but it was actually a spirit of religion speaking to you. Okay, so. Okay, so again, God told me this. God told me this. Ah, but it's really a spirit of religion. Now, I understand the Bible talks about, and <clears throat> we'll get to scripture right now, here in a minute. You know, the spirit of this, the spirit of the Antichrist, so on and so forth. But it's like she embodies these things as if they're animate beings walking around, whispering in the air. That's just religion. Like, I just, I, I don't know. Uh, we, the way that we can be free of the spirit of religion completely is to humble yourself. That's the way. That's the way. Is to humble yourself and to and to be be okay with God confounding you. Be okay with God correcting you. Be okay with God showing you. This. Okay, so God's going to correct you through this video, Catherine. I don't know if you'll watch it. Probably not. But some of your supporters might. And I want you to adhere to the Word of God. I don't want you to adhere to your feelings or what this woman's saying only. Okay, she's she's a false teacher. She's teaching false doctrine. And a lot of things you thought about me were wrong, actually. God can, God can tell you that. And you're okay with that. A lot of things, the way I thought church was supposed to be done, I had it wrong. The way to be a Christian, I had it wrong. We got to be okay with that. It doesn't matter how long we've been a Christian, how much of the Bible we've read, how many years we've taught Bible school or we've been a pastor. We have to have the same humility of, I could have something wrong. So Lord, search my heart. Lord, search my, the wrong, if there's wrong doctrine in me. If I have any kind of religiousness in me, if there's even one scripture in the word of God that I'm interpreting the wrong way, show me God, teach me God. You gotta be that way. That's the only way God can teach us. When you have the heart, God will teach you. He'll send teachers like in this teaching. He'll send teachers to you. You'll, you'll pray this prayer. God, I humble myself. I give you permission to confound me, to correct me. He'll send this teaching to you. I give you permission. Permission. Sweetheart. Friend. We don't give God permission. Now we are to repent and there is a level of giving uh, in or not and quenching the spirit etc but we don't give god permission to do anything okay please find in the scripture but again she quotes one or two three passages here and there just plucking them out of context and i mean that's just classically what they do and there's i have a hunch at the end of what and why this is For example, a teaching like this, and he'll teach you, he'll open up your eyes, and he'll get the religious gunk out of there. Hallelujah. Religious so, gunk. Hallelujah. Just say it. Today, fasting. This is one of the principles in the kingdom of God that so many of the body of Christ 
has interpreted the wrong way of how to fast, of what fasting means, interpreted the word of God of fasting uh, with that religious revelation. So we're, you are going to learn today God's true heart behind fasting, how he wants you to fast, when he wants you to fast, what it's supposed to look like. And from today, you will not be fasting religiously anymore in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Um, so Luke 18, 9. Luke 18, 9. Take notes today, by the way. And just even rewatch this, honestly, because it's, it's important. And these scriptures are important. So take notes. Um, Luke 18, 9. She goes, this is the Pharisee. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. And the tax collector. Um, things in the word of God religiously. It's a serious thing. So we got to get it all out. We got to make sure all of our intentions, it's never in the religious way, but it's with a pure heart. Now, God looks at the heart. Jesus came. He came. and Yes, God looks at the heart. Yes, absolutely. God cares about the heart. The, the gospel was preached to Abraham. He believed there was no Bible. There was no revelation, right? Other than God revealing himself to Abraham directly. He believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness, right? Amen. Amen. And he took the, the curse of the law upon him on that cross. It's by his grace that we are saved. It's by his grace that you are saved. It's not through your... Amen. Absolutely. ...works. It's not through your fasting. It's not through your praying that you're saved. That was the law, and he destroyed it. Now, it is by his grace. It is by his grace. It is by... Okay. Now. She says now. As if... And this is the classic... And I finally found it in the Old Testament. Um, or and, and I went through the Ten Commandments last fall, uh, summer and fall, and at, my, at the church I pastor. My church, because I own it. No, <clears throat> people think like people were saved in the Old Testament. But what did I just say? Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness. <clears throat> there was no law. No one ever, ever, ever was saved by the law. But she just said, but now to, to do this demarcation. And there's some traditions, even, you know, you might belong to it, that loosely believe that. You know, God was God was saving people by the law, but now they say by Jesus Christ. No, people were always saved by Jesus Christ. Salvation is always a free gift of God so that no one will boast. No one will brag about it. No one will say, I earned it. Because, like, honestly, you really think people were saved by the law? Then no one was saved. Moses, David, Abraham, Noah, Adam, Enoch, Elijah, Elisha. No one was saved. No one. Sarah, Rebecca, nobody. Nobody was saved if it's through uh, the law, right? Oh, that's all about abolished. Yes, that's all abolished. Uh, but not really, because it's still a tutor to teach us to say, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Why? So you'll be righteous with God? No, so that you will see and cast your burdens on him because he cares for you. That's why. That's the difference. Faith that we are saved. So we simply believe that Jesus is Lord. We, yep. we speak with words simply, Jesus, you are my Lord, you are my Savior, and we mean it with our heart, and we are saved. As long as we continually to seek God, surrender, you are saved. That's it. It is not like... So again, we've got this contingency, so long as... Now again, there's perseverance of the saints that many people categorize, and if you don't like that, you know, it's more of a Calvinist reform term. But regardless, once you're transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, transferred from, from, from Satan to his beloved son, you're saved. You can't be lost. You really can't. And people who wander away weren't actually saved to begin with. At least that's my argument. God is looking at your, okay, did you fast 36 times uh, per per uh, per month? You know, it is not about doing works. No, it is simply by Jesus' grace that we are saved. Yes, absolutely. Not about works, right? So that no one will boast. So now God is looking at our heart. Now it is about walking with the Holy Spirit in surrender and following him step by step. This is what this Pharisee was doing. He was saying, oh, I'm great. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm not sacred. And to be done only as Holy Spirit leads you. Not done is something that makes you feel more spiritual. It makes you feel like, oh, yeah, I haven't read my Bible in a while. Okay, I'm going to make up for it and, and fast. There's no relationship with God in that. There's no relationship. There's no heart there of like, Jesus, what do you want? Jesus, how can I touch your heart? How can I please you? What do you want me to do? So again, she's, she's correct in these areas, right? And this is where, like anything else, you have... We got sweet tea here in Kentucky. Very sweet tea, usually. You put a little arsenic in it, though. You know, a five-gallon jug of sweet tea, and you just drop, you know, a quarter cup of gasoline or arsenic in it. No one's going to drink that, right, if you know what's in there. Why? I mean, it's just a little bit of arsenic, just a little bit of strychnine, a little bit of gasoline, a little bit of poison, just a little bit. But, see, the trouble 
isn't so much, <clears throat> and coffee drives me out sometimes. The trouble is not, oh, she's got so much truth and just a little bit of error or whatever. It's contaminating the whole thing, right? That's how it works. It's this contamination, like this plate glass window is massive and you just have one little chip. The whole thing is connected. The whole thing's going to shatter. Maybe not right away, but it will shatter. It will shatter. Let's look at a few things because, uh, I mean, I'm already going a little longer than I wanted to. Philippians 1. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others of goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I'm a pure, that, excuse me, that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that ever in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed and I rejoice. So is pro Christ proclaimed here? No. Now she might say repent and, or she might say believe in this and that. And Jesus is our savior. Okay. And that, that is true. And that's better than some people. But she doesn't talk about the gospel being the salvation of sinners. I've watched a lot of other videos, and I'm not going to watch anymore. You can go watch this if you want to, because it's so long, and I don't want to just rip off all her content. Because ultimately, this is in a spirit, because I'm going to say, well, she's a Christian, so I get to correct you, and you can correct me. That's fine. I'm not going to lambast you and say you're this and insult you and everything else. Now, I also disagree with the fact that you're an apostle, Catherine. You're not an apostle, okay? I mean, there's apostles in the Mormon church. Are you a Mormon? There's apostles in other areas. I mean, let's be real here. There were no female apostles. There were no, uh, it's just, uh, there's so much. There's so much. It's all packaged together. And I did this a few times in live chats. What is the gospel? What am I supposed to do? Some people, do, oh, deliverance from demons. Faith, deliverance, freedom. I mean, but it's not though, right? It's not. The gospel is rather the power of God for salvation or to salvation. Romans 1, 13 in particular, and we'll back up a little bit. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I plan to come to you and that I might have some fruit also among you, just as among the other Gentiles. I'm a debtor, both to Greeks and to barbarians, both the wise and unwise. So as much in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you are who are in Rome also. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel of Christ is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as is written, the righteous or the just shall live by faith. Some say righteous. <clears throat> so the gospel is salvation. But she doesn't talk about salvation. Not that I've seen. Now, I've not watched all of her content. And there's, she's producing stuff all the time like crazy. Again, she's got almost a quarter million subscribers. Help me to get to 500 and beyond. Thousand. Lastly, 1 Timothy 1. And again, we can talk about female pastors, elders, this and that. But I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus. This saying is trustworthy, deserving of full acceptance that Christ came into the world to save sinners. So she doesn't talk about why Jesus came. There's no historical framing in this video or in other videos. I could be wrong. I've not seen all our videos and I'm not going to watch many more. But from what I've seen, the gospel is not preached. There is no hope. It's only hope in this life only. 1 Corinthians 15, if we hope in this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. She is telling her people, and there's lots of people that go here, and they do this kind of classic thing, you know, they fall back, and, you know, they're being quote-unquote delivered. But all of this, here's the thing, all of this could be a show. I think it's a show. I mean, just between you and me and anybody else listening. It could not be, right? It could be real. But there's no Acts uh, 4 or, or, or any other situation, Acts 8. Or nine, actual healing, right? An actual revelation, an actual appearance of Christ. Men with lame legs, men who are blind or deaf, people who are literally dead in the grave. 
None of that has happened. And I've been paying it off and on, paying attention off and on to the charismatic uh, word faith, whatever you want to call her movement, not just her, but many others for several years. And there's never been a time. I know Justin Peters, he's a hardcore cessationist. Uh, we would differ a little bit on that. And that's fine. But he does a lot more of that. And you're probably familiar with him. That's kind of his, his wheelhouse. But I don't see it. I don't, I just don't see it. Oh, I'm going to straight. I mean, you know, one leg is shorter than the other. Okay. You're delivered from demons. The spirit of depression. Oh, what does that even mean? Because you're telling me that these people aren't depressed anymore. You're telling me that these people don't have problems anymore. The spirit of, uh, of this, of that. And I mean, it's just like, I don't know. I mean, the trouble is we have people who just don't, people are just gullible. Don't be so gullible. Don't be so foolish. You're religious. Don't, don't front load and make religion bad. Bad religion's bad. False religion's bad. But religion isn't bad. Ultimately, we have a religious relationship. It's not a one or the other. Oh, a religion, not a relationship. Or a relationship, not a religion. No, it's both. It's both. Catherine Crick, there's a little note here. This is a testimony. On Resurrection Sunday, I've delivered from the spirit of death, infirmity, weakness, nighttime oppression, depression, sickness, and disease, fear of financial lack, lies from the enemy, attacks on ministry, talents, gifts, delay, delay, distraction, disruption, failure of marriage, family breakdown, witchcraft. Okay, that's you probably want to put that one up, up top there. Orphan spirit, self-pity, uh, spirit, spouse, assassin stress. What? Overburden attack on my destiny. <clears throat> and that of my husband and children. Attack on emotional health, well-being, my family. But today. Right there. But today. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Just okay. Just quote Joshua out of contest. Great. Uh, I guess and or AD. We will prosper and be in good health, even as our soul prospers. Goodness and mercy. I think mer why mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we'll dwell in the Lord forever. Okay. Blessed. Okay. So that's a that's a comment on one of her Catherine Crick's. All that to say, she doesn't preach the gospel. She's preaching something else. It's kind of like Joel Osteen. And I had a conversation with um, Joe Bahoda. Uh, it was just my, my most recent Contra talk that dropped on Saturday. Those always drop on Saturday, by the way. So if you're interested, kind of keeping up with certain things. These videos that I'm doing here are Wednesday and Friday. Sometimes I'll do more. But I can't do very many more because I just, I just, uh, I'm busy. But if you want to support me, you can buy me a cup of coffee, by the way. Uh, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash Richard Contra and drop me a tip there. You can do that. Uh, and that helps me out. Kind of like if we were to go and get coffee at Starbucks or our favorite local place and you, you know, drop me five or whatever dollars. Uh, that helps with overall just production of things uh, for equipment and also can alleviate some financial strain and so on. Anyway, if you want to do that course, you don't have to do that. <clears throat> but point is, she's not preaching the gospel. She's here. She's not preaching the gospel. She's just not. Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. She's not talking about sinners. She's not talking about redemption. She's not talking about judgment. She's not talking about heaven or hell. It's all about here and now. Okay. She's, she's adding up vain words. All right. Lastly, Matthew 6, 7. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. But we're still supposed to pray, mainly because it's for us, right? Because we're seeing the connection, I believe, the this knowledge, because God doesn't need us to pray. He doesn't need us to sell, to repent. He doesn't need our money. He doesn't need anything. He doesn't. Again, if you want to turn it on your head and say he does, like some of these health, wealth, word, faith people, then you have this neutered, wimpy, spineless God. 
Well, that's not the God of scripture. That's not the God of reality at all. But she's empty, adding up empty words, whether she's praying and she does it later in many other places, talking in tongues and it's like, that's a tongue. It's not a tongue. That's nonsense. It's nonsense. Okay. There's nobody interpreting that. If you want to speak in a tongue, okay, fine. Roll with that, but stick with what the scripture says about tongues. You need an interpreter, but tongues aren't really great. Paul ends up saying. Rather, prophesying, which is telling it like it is, telling the truth, not just future casting, that's some prophecy. Most of it is calling out the nonsense that's happening in the moment. So I would argue there are no apostles, no modern apostles at all. I would say there's modern prophets, though. And sometimes people get all bent out of shape, like, you know, I'm Nostradamus or some guy, you know, casting out this or raising up my hands and predicting, you know, the next 9-11 or something. Most of prophecy in the Bible isn't actually that. It's calling out the junk, the sin, the rebellion that's happening in the present. Anyway, this went a little longer. Y'all can follow me on Gab if you want to at Genesis 317 and on Twitter as well, Richard T. Henry, at Richard T. Henry. I got to see if I can change some of those names. But anyway, Catherine Crick isn't preaching the gospel. Of all the things I've seen, the services, the short clips, the long clips, it's the only here and now. And if we are hoping in Christ for this life only, we are of all people most to be pitied. Be against the world for the world. I hope you found this helpful. Take care.